All right, hold on to your seat. Listen up. Shalom, everyone. My name is Jose Oscar Salinas with Unite Christians and Jews. Today's video is part eight of my rapture series, which I'm turning into a practice debate. Because these pastors will not reply to my emails. Some might call this a campaign in which I'm asking people to email every pre-trip teacher or talk show like Jimmy Evans to please reason or debate me or line up your favorite prophecy teacher to help me clarify this doctrine so we can stop division in the church and unite Christians and Jews. Nevertheless, i like to share that after seven years of Bible college at Calvary Chapel, I found out that there's a misunderstanding or someone is setting us up for the fallen away event before building the third temple. Yet I hope you look at all these videos with different... All right, so there, that's unbelievable. All right, so we're going to go through, I think there's three errors right off the bat, if not four. Let's start at the very beginning. You see, I don't know who this guy is, and I don't know if the Jose Salinas, uh, the guy talking, supports this timeline. But let's get this one out of the way here. It has the rapture of the church, which is what we read in Matthew 24. Oh, I got that right there. So we'll go through this. Let me do this, and then that's not going to work. And computer's goofy, or I'm goofy, or both. So we go to Matthew 24, verse 30 and 31, 29 through 31. Um, 30 is the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, right? And there shall appear the sign of the Son of Man, which is Jesus, in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. There's going to be no mistaking what's happening here. When Jesus comes, it's not. there's not going to be any doubt about it. And he's going to send his angels in with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. This is the rapture. This is when we are lifted up. This is when we are changed in the twinkling of an eye. Alright, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Now, who's going to be risen up first? It's going to be first the dead in Christ, and those of us which remain are lifted up with them. Do I got the right one? First, Thess First Thessalonians 4, 16, 17, and then 18. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So when Jesus comes, he, you just saw it in Matthew 24 with the trump, right? With the, he said, the Lord shall descend. That's Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven with the shout. That's the, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God. That's what we just read in Matthew 24. There will be a... Tr Do I have to show it to you? Are you guys not seeing it? I really believe that people are just absolutely blind and oblivious to what is being written in the book of the Lord here. If we could go here, it says uh, somewhere, I think, maybe I'm wrong. Nope, not wrong at all. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. This is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. There will be a great sound of a trumpet. And we read the same exact thing. You just have to connect the dots. Right? With the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then we which are alive and remain are caught up together. This is the rapture. And it's when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. And I've showed you, if you've watched any of my previous video, I talk about this all the time, that our enemy is gathered at our feet. All right, till I make thine enemy thy footstool. All right, this is, goes all the way back to Genesis 3. The enemy is going to be gathered 
at our feet, just like what we read in Revelation 20. When Satan is loosed, when the devil's loosed, he gathers together the unsaved at our feet. And just like the other video I made this morning, Revelation 3, verse 9, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, to know that I have loved thee and not them. All right, so look, we are lifted up in the air to be with the Lord. Our enemies gathered at our feet, and fire comes down from God out of heaven and destroys them all in wickedness the sin death all that is destroyed forever this is the promised land that we shall be delivered into a new world where there is no more death all right so i got that out of the way i was going to take 10 seconds to do it it probably took me 10 minutes but let's move on we got two more Hello, to go everyone. My name is Jose Oscar Salinas. With Unite Christians and Jews, today's video is part 8 of my Rapture series, which I'm turning into a practice debate. Because these pastors will not reply to my emails. Some might call this a campaign in which I'm asking people to email every pre-trip teacher or talk show like Jimmy Evans to please reason or debate me or line up your favorite prophecy teacher to help me clarify this doctrine so we can stop division in the church and unite Christians and Jews. Nevertheless, I like I, I'm not going to touch that one, but I could. To share that after seven years of Bible college. After seven years of Bible college. Well, that, may, that might be your problem right there. You don't need seven years of Bible college. I'm not saying it's um, a sin, but it's, it's not necessary. If you've got a Bible that is from God that you can hold in your hands, why would you need a Bible college to tell you what God says? Now, I get this uh, from people. I'm not kidding you, and it burns my rear end. It really does. You're saying because you went to Bible college when you were a snot-nosed teenager that you know more of the Bible than I do, And there's nothing that will ever change that. Because I can't go back to being a snot-nosed teenager and go to Bible college. So because of that, I'm cursed and damned forever. And I have to depend on you. Because when you were a snot-nosed teenager, you went to Bible college. And you know more about God than I ever could. Now, I'm not, I don't go along with that at all. And it burns my ass that somebody would make this claim that oh I went to Bible college when I was a snot nosed teenager. That, I'm telling you that it burns my butt because anybody, any one of us can just simply pick up a Bible, hold it in our hands, believe these are the words of God and wisdom will be given to them. They don't need a, Bible college. They don't. And then if you're coming out of Bible college and you're still confused, don't you see a problem with that? Okay. All right. Enough of my rant. Oh, so that's, I just wanted to. At Calvary Chapel, I found out that there's a misunderstanding or someone is setting us up for the Fallen Away event. Okay. The Fallen Away. Somebody's setting us up for the Fallen Away event. Oh, no. The Falling Away is going to come and then we're all going to be deceived. Oh, no. I mean, Fear and panic and disorder and absolute abject confusion, not knowing the scripture at all. Seven years of Bible, I mean, for crying out loud. You went to Bible college for seven years and you can't figure out the falling away. It's, it's not complicated, man. All it takes is faith and the word of God. Believe what you're reading. Believe it's from God. It is from God. Guarantee it. And it's going to, it's going to, pan out that way it's gonna you're gonna be shown that this was true the whole entire time whether you figure it out now or later it's gonna be shown to you all right so let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition this has already happened it had not yet happened when that at the time it was written but it was going to happen and because and it's more prevalent today than ever before because 
people are not trusting the Bible that they hold in their hands. They're going to Bible college and listening to some false teachers for seven years, being getting indoctrinated, and that's all they do is indoctrinate people. The same thing happens in the public school system with the four-year-old snot, no, five-year-old snot, uh, snot nose kids, right? Whether you're five years old or you're you know, 18 years old, you're a snot nosed kid and don't know squat. That's that's the truth, all right? It was true for me, it was true for you, and it's true for this guy over here. So this falling away has already happened, and this was uh, the establishment of the Roman Catholic Church. Now, I'm not going to go through everything in the Bible, because I don't want to get into that, but I just want to show that this man of sin, the son of perdition, is the who claims to be the Holy Father, the representative of Jesus Christ on earth, and exactly who we're reading about in Revelation 17, and who has no wife, no desire to have a wife, and no children. It's obvious, obvious, who the man of sin is. All right, but because we live in a world now that people are, oh, it's, hey, it's going to be, it's a futurist uh, viewpoint. So it's all going to happen in the future. Then you got the dummies on the other side to say, well, that that man of sin already came and passed. Don't worry about it. Don't read the Bible anymore. It's already finished. All right, so you got on one side, you got the preterist, and then on the other side, you got the futurist, and they're both wrong. All right, so the obvious answer. Look, I'm not a. In, you know, I'm not a black, uh, a gray area kind of guy. I'm a black and white guy, right? So, I'm not a the truth is somewhere in the middle kind of guy. I'm telling you, the truth is the truth, in regardless, all right, regardless. And so, the the man of sin is uh, accepted by everybody. It's it, pretty simple. It's the Antichrist. Okay, so I could get into that. So. How many times is the Antichrist mentioned in the Bible? Not as often as you might have thought. Right? In 1 John 2, and 1 John 4, and 2 John 1. That's it. But when people talk, it's like Lucifer. It's, an, it's incredible how much people make out of the Lucifer and how much people make out of the Antichrist. They make more out of it than what it is. The Antichrist here, I won't argue. It's, it's, uh, it was warned of us way back in Daniel. The four beasts, the first beast being the king of Babylon, and the fourth beast is the king of the Roman Empire, which is known today as the Roman Catholic Church. So anyways, the falling away has already happened, and it's insanity in ignorance to suggest well don't worry about it. it's gonna happen in the future if you believe that you're gonna be blind to what's happening right now and the deception and the just the wickedness that's going on in the world today and you're deranged to think that though the world's there's nothing wrong with the world that we're living in today you got to be out of your mind this world is full of all kinds of wickedness not just people but the whole system and structure of the world um, the way our children are being brainwashed all right and then I could get into all the wicked it would take me five hours to get into one percent of the, all the wickedness of the world so anyways let's go before building the third temple yeah, before building the third temple there there we go there it you might as well get a tattoo, I'm stupid, right on your forehead. Uh, I'm, I'm being harsh, man, but seven years of Bible college. And you don't know who the temple is. Jesus destroyed the temple. And Jesus rebuilt the temple. There is no third temple waiting to be built Jesus already destroyed it and already built it back up and now through him we have access to that temple which is everlasting life 
it's not it's not a building it never really was about a building but Jesus destroyed that temple that was prophesied and rebuilt it himself and if you if you don't see it man you just wasted a bunch of money and a bunch of time of your life and how are you going to get out of that and seven years of brainwashing how do you escape that man well there's only one way and that's through Jesus Christ so that's all I wanted to share with you it's unbelievable how these people are so wrong and I the big cause for it is the Roman Catholic Bible College seven years of Bible College seven years of being brainwashed by Catholics and you still can't figure out this this is all kinds of goofy right here all right make it real simple again and then I'll close we the next thing that's gonna happen is the return of our Lord Jesus Christ and when the Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven we are lifted up first the dead in Christ and then those of us that are alive lifted up to be with the Lord we're up in the air with the Lord and our enemy is gathered at our feet and all wickedness is destroyed forever and then there's the new city of God will come down from heaven onto the new there will be a new earth a new heaven and a new earth and there will be no more sin no more sorrow no more crying no more pain and no more death 